I'd like to introduce you to the physical activity paradox. You're probably already aware of it, but not by this term. Have you ever questioned why some patients in active jobs are really unfit? Or why that gardener you know who works physically all day is overweight? Why that builder who's often lifting has a bad back? Or what about that farmer who's always out in the fresh air chasing cows yet has high blood pressure? Well, a great article published in 2017 in the British Journal of Sports Medicine proposed six reasons why job-related physical activity differs from leisure-related physical activity. I always felt there was a difference, but this really helped to clarify some of the things that I have been suspicious of. So have a look at their suggestions. Job-related physical activity is often too low in intensity to increase cardiovascular health or strength. The prolonged elevation of heart rate, blood pressure, and inflammatory markers has been linked to cardiovascular disease. The individual often has low control over effort, duration, and rest breaks. Therefore, it's likely that they have poor recovery time. The energy cost of their job may reduce motivation to take leisure exercise. And I certainly see this a lot in the clinic. People have a physical job, family responsibilities, some people really do or would struggle to meet the national exercise guidelines. So occupational activity needs to be understood and factored in to the patient's exercise plan. It's different than leisure activity, but it may still influence their recovery. If a patient hits you with, I keep fit at work, then the research definitely questions the efficacy of this. The research supports specific leisure activity as superior to and different from work-related physical tasks. So in clinic, we should ask ourselves when we're assessing patients, is there an occupational link for those patients with fatigue and pain syndromes? It's certainly a big lifestyle factor and something that may need addressing during an assessment. So in conclusion, the physical activity paradox clarifies that the difference between job-related activity and leisure activity is significant enough to factor it into our assessment and rehabilitation planning. I hope you've enjoyed these free online lectures, parts one, two, and three, and this bonus video. The online course is available via the link in the description below, and you can sign up straight away and start lecture five, where we discuss a very important topic preparing the patient to exercise. The success of even the best rehabilitation exercise is determined before you even set that exercise. We first need to identify barriers, clear nocebos, rugby tackle kinesiophobia, and build trust. To help you achieve this, in part six, I'll introduce you to the three systems approach that I successfully use in clinic. Click on the link in the description below to get started with the next lecture.